Welcome to Your Money Guides, brought to you by Interface Financial Planning. Welcome to the 2020s. Happy New Year, Happy New Decade. As we start the new decade, I reach a personal landmark because I can now reflect back over 30 years of helping clients as their financial advisor. How different things were in January 1990 when I took on my first clients, when I was an agent for General Portfolio. The stories I could tell. Their products gave dreadful value, but to their credit, they gave me the grounding in financial planning that has remained the core of what I do. The 1986 Financial Services Act had only been in operation for a little over 18 months, and financial planning services had tied up with General Portfolio. It was the financial planning that I immediately took to heart, and at a time when fact finds were, for many, were literally on the back of a fact packet. And mine were held up as an example of how to complete a comprehensive fact find and ensure that I understood client circumstances and what they needed. On the other hand, my managers were often reprimanding me for not selling high commission products. But putting clients first has always worked, and I'm proud the clients from January 1990 are still my clients today. I'm often asked why I started as a financial advisor, and there are many reasons why we reach a turning point in our lives. I'd been a teacher for 16 years, and I saw the opportunity to teach people how to manage their finances. From the start, I was attracted to the idea of making a difference in clients' lives by applying my financial and consultancy skills. I completed my Chartered Insurance Institute financial planning exams in 1991, and I became an independent financial advisor in February 1992. I understood that the more knowledge that I gained, the more that I could help clients. So I completed my advanced financial planning exam soon afterwards, gained my certified financial planner certification in 1995, and I was awarded my fellowship of the Institute of Financial Planning soon afterwards. I became fee-based in 1996, a foresight that meant that in January 2013, the only effect of the retail distribution review was to increase my fees. Over the years, I've seen a succession of regulators, starting with Lotro, then FIMBRA, the PIA, the FSA, and currently the FCA. Each change of regulator was an attempt to improve value for clients, but have they got it right? Absolutely not. Don't get me wrong, I would never want to go back to the anything goes days of the 1990s, but successive mountains of administration have made it more difficult and more expensive to provide good, honest advice to ordinary people. To be fair to the regulators, though, it's much easier to objectify everything and turn things into a tick box exercise than it is to measure values such as honesty, compassion, empathy and contribution. Values are, are intangible and difficult to objectify. But if the FCA could find a way to assess the values of an advisor, a lot of the box ticking could disappear. For myself, there's absolutely no way in which I would ever do anything that was contrary to my client's best interest, and I've often done things for no charge as long as it was right for the client. Have I always done everything perfectly? Of course not. And I will never apologise for being human. However, did I always set out to make my clients' lives better? Absolutely. And have I succeeded? Well, I'm a perfectionist, so I'll have to accept that 99% of the time is probably good enough. On reflection, I find it amusing that the regulators have had their work cut out keeping up with me. I was qualified before advisors needed to be. I was fee-based years before the FCA demanded it. Discussing vulnerable clients, disability, diversity. Just check my website and please try to keep up. My wife probably, and justifiably, won't forgive me if I forget to mention another landmark this month. We were married on the 1st of January 1970, so we've just celebrated 50 years of marriage. I've been blessed with a wonderful wife, three amazing children, and a grandson who makes me feel great every time I see him. Top the golden wedding with a golden career, where I've helped clients and made a difference almost every day, and I couldn't ask for anything better. To the younger advisors out there, if you wear your heart on your sleeve and put your client's interests first, 
you'll have a wonderfully satisfying career where you'll make a difference to people's lives. Then, when you are 71 like me, you can look back with great pride and say that you made a difference, as long as you tick enough boxes to satisfy the FCA, or whatever regulator replaces them, of course. I wish you all a happy new year and all the best for the next decade. For more information, visit our website at interfacefinancialplanning.co.uk.